All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the sixth day of March in the year of our Lord, 2023. Thank God he's coming back. <laughs> Lord Jesus, come quickly. Oh, that's what Maranatha means, by the way. Uh, it's a mess here. And it's not going to get fixed. It's, you know, um, there, as far as I can tell in, in history... And in the Bible, there's never been a real revival. Uh, you had temporary things with certain individuals, like uh, King uh, Josiah in the Old Testament. Uh, but they didn't bring permanent changes. And yesterday I did a video talking about, I think it was yesterday, not the day before, Sunday. What is today? I don't know. I said, no, today is today is Monday. That's right. Yesterday was Sunday. Maybe it was Saturday. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, looking at James White, uh, um, who most people don't know who he is, but uh, he's a uh, one of the foremost YouTube promoters of Calvinism, which is not Christianity. And it, it takes you a while to figure that out because there's a certain logical consistency inside Calvinist theology. But you could say the same thing about Rome. Once you buy into the central core lies, it becomes consistent. But it's a lie. Uh, the God of Calvinism, I mean the God, let me make this very clear, not the God of the Westminster Confession of Faith and the Second London Baptist Confession, uh, which are basically identical. The, their idea, what they, they're t when they talk about their God, <clears throat> that God is no more the God of the Bible than the God of Mormonism is the God of the Bible. And it took me a while. You see, you have to understand, you, you have to learn an entire new language and system of thought to understand what Calvinism is, and most Calvinists don't have a clue. So, And a lot of people think it's tulip. No, it's not. It's what under, underlies that. Uh, but James White, you, for example, you'll hear him, it's like he thinks that election, is, I mean, God's predestination of all things is salvation and is the gospel. No, it's not. No, it's not. <clears throat> That's not what the Bible says. See, he doesn't examine things by the Scripture. He, he uses the Bible to prove his Calvinism. He very selective because there's not much Calvinism. Not much that supports Calvinism in the Bible. But once you buy into a system and you put on the glasses, the colored glasses, then you see Calvinism everywhere. And that's not just about Calvinism. It's you know, we see that everywhere. Uh, Lutheranism. Um, although at least Lutheranism is a little more messy. It'd be like, you know, as far as the uh, the two branches of the historic development, I mean, of, of the, the historic downfall of Christianity, uh, the corruption of Christianity. You have uh, uh, Eastern Orthodoxy, uh, what we call Eastern Orthodoxy in the West, <laughs> as if the West is the whole world. Uh, yeah, the papacy, of course, is uh, a later development. But the, uh, you have Latin Christianity and Greek Christianity. Let put it. That, let me put it that way. But uh, of the two, because uh, Greek Christianity is is not 
so centralized and it's highly ritualized but it doesn't really have a central authority and a, it's not so dogmatic um, so there might be room for there's more room for real Christians to survive in that uh, Roman Catholicism well Pope Francis Pope Francis is trying to stamp out Roman Catholicism and replace it with wokeism, uh, greenism, Mother Earth worship. By the way, that's the Pachamamas. I realize that most people were not paying any attention. But uh, when was that? Uh, was that the 2019? It's the same year that COVID appeared. In fact, COVID appeared one month after publicly. The first public case of COVID appeared one month after the uh, uh, Pope Francis's uh, Amazonian Synod, which did not, which met in Rome, not in the Amazon, where he brought pagan Mother Earth idols and the associated priests and priestesses and holy objects into St. Peter's Cathedral before the high altar, and they all paraded around together, him and his bishops and cardinals and the pagans and everything all paraded around together and then went on procession out the front door. Yeah, they had the holy canoe with the Pachamama, and some Catholics were thinking, oh, that's, that's an image of... of Mary pregnant with Christ. No, it's the Mother Earth pregnant with the with Earth. Oh, the ignorance! Uh, trying to fit the absolute paganism of Francis into into uh, con traditional Catholicism. No, it doesn't work. Uh, he's out to destroy traditional Catholicism. He's making. He's waging a war on uh, the Latin Mass and, you know, traditional liturgy and just trying to wipe it out. He is a, a totalitarian. He's revealed his colors again. Servant of Satan. One of the children of Satan. Now, <clears throat> but let me put it this way. Some, just when I'm getting sympathetic with uh, conservative Catholics in their plight, in their fight with Francis, because he's just a pagan. He's he is the most antichrist pope in history, from what I can tell. The others were just sinful, <laughs> exceedingly sinful often. But pagan, uh, but Francis is just out to destroy uh, Christianity. Period. I mean, the only thing they he I think the only thing he hates more than conservative Catholics is probably Bible believing Christians. They all, I mean, any of the last popes, they, they always, well, all the popes, hate people that have the Bible as their authority or instead of him. See, to be saved, according to traditional Catholic doctrine, they say outside the church, there is no salvation. Well, that's a truism, because if you're saved, you're in the church of Jesus Christ. It's a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing. But carnal human beings, fallen human beings, cannot see the kingdom of God. So they only see what is visible to their carnal eyes, fleshly eyes, and they create a fleshly church that they can see. And that was a gradual development. It was fairly well complete. And, you know, there, it, it was going that way for the first three centuries and then under Constantine. Uh, actually, the Catholic Church was came about, there was a split uh, in 1053, I believe, or give or take a couple of years. I might be off by a year, but uh, the great uh, schism between the East and the West. The, the, the pompous, wicked, carnal head of Rome and his ambassador and the, the, the delegate of, of, uh, of the Eastern churches, which don't have, they don't have a pope, but they have a uh, the bishop of Constantinople is the like the uh, 
not the director, but the moderator of the seven, I think there's seven or six uh, principal churches, regional. They're state churches, really, like the, uh, uh, the uh, what do they call them? Patriarchs. The Patriarchate of Moscow and the Patriarchate of Jerusalem, and there's the Patriarchate of Antioch and a number of others that go back a long time. Uh, and a sort of, um, they, they are the Politburo, the, 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 the seven, I believe it's seven or thereabouts, um, patriarchates, patriarchs. Uh, they are, they have, all you have equal authority, but they have the patriarch of Constantinople is like the, the moderator of the group. He doesn't have any more authority, but he's called the first among equals. Of course, they rec they call the Pope sometimes the first among equals. But that see they they reject the uh, for good reason the supremacy of Rome and the Bishop of Rome. They recognize that Rome uh, the is legitimate church or was, but they reject the claims of uh, supremacy and all that nonsense. Of course, it is nonsense. They're right. But because they're a little more diffuse and they are not so, uh, they don't have one standard, one head that defines everything. <laughs> wow, what a mess that's become. Um, it, you've got a little, I think, I think a Christian might have a chance of surviving there, unlike Rome. Uh, <laughs> Although there are Catholics that, that are that are actually born again, a few now and then you've run across one, just like you run across a born again Lutheran once in a while, <laughs> or a born again Southern Baptist, or born again fundamentalist, or whatever, but not too often. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there there's so much. Uh, the biggest threat to true Christianity is fake Christianity, and that's what dominates the world today. It's like the United States, uh, sixty-five to seventy percent of of people in the United States, like a year or two ago, during the, the height of wokeism, still identified themselves as Christians. But they don't live like Christians. I mean, their loyalty isn't to Christ. They, 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 they think their, their idea of Christianity is far removed from the biblical idea. I mean, it's just like I was looking at uh, uh, the, the easy believism, uh, the dogmatic easy believism. Uh, the idea of often among fundamentalist Baptists or Southern Baptists is if you if you believe you're going to heaven you are that's the um, one guy notoriously uh, a notorious advocate of easy what's easy believism uh, what it really is is uh, you trust in you're, you're still a trusting in works because because you made a decision for Christ because because. <laughs> uh, or you said a prayer, that's the Rick Warren, easy believism, uh, and or sincere, or you did this or you did that, you're a Christian and you're going to heaven. Or got baptized, uh, whether it's infant baptism or not. Uh, it's still, if, if you're looking to something you did rather than to what God did in Christ, I would say you haven't been born again, and you're not on your way to heaven. Uh, it's like I can say with, without a doubt it was what God God saved me, Christ saved me. It was the Holy Spirit that did the that brought me to Christ. All I did is say, "Wow, <laughs> I'll go with that." Out of desperate, after he drove me to a position of desperation, which was truth. Now. I happen it, once in a while you run across something that is just iconic, and reveals what things really are. Uh, talking about Francis here, uh, which Pope Bergoglio. Now, <clears throat> the pagan, I think he's actually I think he's a disciple of Pierre de Chardin, which is thoroughly a thoroughly pagan now dead Francis. Uh, um, what is he? Uh, Francis is a, uh, my memory, not a Franciscan, Jesuit. 
Um, but uh, Pierre de Chardin was a Jesuit, and he had that blended evolutionary. Well, by the way, evolution comes from Hinduism. Uh, paganism. Pa uh, evolution is inherent in paganism. The idea of uh, of transmigration of the soul and things like that, uh, and spiritual evolution or de-evolution uh, through generations. That's paganism. That's where the idea comes from. Darwin's grandfather, I believe, was a thoroughgoing uh, pagan. Uh, he was not at all a Christian. So, but once in a while you run across something that's thoroughly iconic. But, well, where was I going with, with uh, Pierre de Chardin? Anyway, the, this uh, uh, Jesuit uh, mixed sort of a philosopher, scientist, Roman Catholic, mixed ideas of paganism, uh, Hindu, you know, the, the, Hindu, the occultic elements with uh, the pseudoscience of Darwin and talked about cosmic evolution, which is thoroughly New Age, which isn't even spoken of anymore. But the New Age movement was nothing but a, a renaissance, uh, a revival of paganism. It's still out there. It's just so endemic that nobody sees it anymore. Uh, <clears throat> Oprah Winfrey was a was and is, I mean, it, it's just part of society now. Nobody even recognizes it because it's not unusual, which is exactly where homosexuality and transgenderism and everything else goes. It's become so common that it's becoming more and more invisible. We don't notice the weirdness. We don't notice the, the, the uh, rapidly accelerating disintegration of society as the Bible tells us, occurs. And it becomes, you know, when you see the book of Revelation where in spite of all the uh, catastroph catastrophic judgments from God on humans and their rebellion, they refuse to repent and instead take up arms against Christ when they know he's coming back. Let's gather the armies together and fight against Christ. The Creator. <laughs> Talk about Chutzpah doesn't end well. Well, it ends well for his people, but not for his enemies. Uh, anyway, the, the, once in a while you run, you, you're reminded about what Roman Catholicism really is. It is an antichrist religion, antichrist. It's opposed to Christ. It's opposed to the gospel. It's opposed to the cross. It retains the visible outward stuff it's it's like a a fly that has been devoured by a spider the shell is still there the eyes are still there the wings are still there the legs are still there but all the life has been sucked out of it and uh, okay so here this is from let me show you this is from the Remnant uh, uh, newsletter, uh, this is a very conservative Catholic uh, anti-Francis thing. Uh, want uh, It's like, let's go back before Vatican II. Okay, well, at least the things were clearer then. Now, Vatican II just blew a bunch of smoke in everybody's face, you know, redefining the church, but they don't really, it, it's just, Francis is a devotee of Vatican II, too, because it, 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 uh, it destroys the truth. The exclusivity of Christ is really what it, it destroys. But there's, there's some iconic things that show up uh, that uh, Catholicism before Francis, even, how bad it was and, and is, so this is again a, uh, a one of the uh, the rebels against Francis, uh, wanting to, to restore traditional Roman Catholicism uh, of the early fifties or something like that. <clears throat> the 
back before the before the Rome at least publicly went completely wicked. Mm. Who knows what was going? They kept things pretty much under lock and key back then. Who knows how wicked they were? But now, I mean, when when archbishops like Vigano are at war with Francis, and and uh, Archbishop Vigano has referred to the Vatican as a homosexual mafia. I guess that makes uh, Francis the godfather of the mafia, of the homosexual mafia. But uh, uh, that why Catholics? Why don't you open your Bibles and find out what God says, and stop listening? to these people that you know are not of God. How, how many years, far before Francis, the, all the revelations of the sexual wickedness, the pedophilia, not just homosexuality, but homosexual pedophilia. And yet... You persist in giving offerings to the whore of Babylon, which is what it is. It is false Christianity. And here is, and it was false Christianity before all this stuff. This is, uh, okay, this is about Lent. And again, this is conservative. And, and he quotes, I um, can't think of the guy's name up here that does this, but. He quotes from the uh, Thursday after Ash Wednesday collect. So I imagine this this is part of the, the special Lenten uh, liturgy for this day. Does the Bible say anything about Lent? No, it doesn't exist in the Bible. <laughs> so I don't practice it because it's not biblical. Uh, Lutherans practice Lent. Uh, Anglicans practice Lent. <laughs> But it's contrary to this, it's anti-gospel, and this is this is one of those iconic things that shows you what something really is. Oh God, it says why here, but this is a typo. It has to be who, because why makes no sense. Why by sin art offended? That's Francis. Why does sin offend you, God? No, it's supposed to be who. Probably a spell checker did it. <laughs> Technology, Satan controls that too, obviously. O oh God, who by sin art offended and by penance appeased, mercifully regard the prayers of thy supplicant people and turn aside the scourges of thine anger, which we deserve for our sins. This is a denial of the cross, the atonement of Christ. Who by sin art offended? Well, but God solved that problem, didn't he? In Christ. And by penance appeased. Penance is not repentance, by the way. Penance is doing doing something to atone for your sin. That's penance. Doing something to make up for your wickedness. Not trusting in Christ. Trusting in your works, your penance, your prayers. You're giving up sweets or something for Lent. This is, Lent is the enemy. It's 40 days of rejecting the cross. That God is suspended by sin, yes. And by penance appeased. Absolutely false. Antichrist. Anti-gospel. Mercifully regard the prayers of thy supplicant people. You don't, they're, they're not, when you do this, you're rejecting Christ. You're rejecting the cross. You're rejecting God's salvation. If you can be, a, if you can appease God by penance, Jesus died for nothing. May our fasts be acceptable to thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. And by expiating our sins, 
may they render us worthy of thy grace. Well, grace is what gives to the un- God gives to the unworthy. God saves sinners and lead us to eternal remedies. No, you've just rejected the eternal re- remedy, which is the death of Christ on the cross for your sins. May by our fasts, may, actually, may our fasts be acceptable to thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. And by our fasts, expiating our sins, may they, see it's referenced, may they, our fasts, render us worthy of thy grace. That is antichrist. That is satanic. That is a denial of the cross. We are not saved by what we do. We're saved by God in Christ through faith and that alone. You see, in in their Lenten service, they reveal the truth about Roman Catholicism. It's about our works. May our works, may our fasts, our penance, penance, render us worthy. They don't deny the grace is necessary, just that we have to be worthy to receive it. No. The scandal of the cross is God saves sinners. Not the worthy. He saves the unworthy who call upon him, who trust in him, who believe that Christ can save them. And he does. It's God's work, not ours. And it's very clear in the New Testament, especially in Galatians, that if you add your works or obedience to the law or anything like that to it, well, I try to keep the, I trust in Jesus and I try to keep the Ten Commandments. And between the two of them, I hope I'll get into heaven. Well, you're not getting there because you have rejected God's salvation and sought to establish your own, your own righteousness. The righteousness that God gives us through faith in Christ the righteousness of Christ himself. It's, and it's in him. So if we are in Christ, but if we're not, if we're, if we're trusting in something else, see, Roman Catholicism is a wicked, false, uh, it's a counterfeit Christianity. It has certain appearances. It, it claims to be uh, Christ church, but it's not. And this is makes that so evident. Every Lent, Holy Mother Church, well, she gives, what does the harlot give birth to? Bastards. You have to be born of God, born of the Spirit. You have to be born, it's the Father. God God has to be your Father. If you're a bastard, that means God isn't your Father. Uh, Bastard of a prostitute, that's what's going on. Because, uh, well, the church, uh, uh, after Constantine, the, the established official church was a prostitute. It sold out to the state. And... In an indirect way, Roman Catholicism developed out of that because there was no Roman, you know, other than the fact they spoke Latin. See, a Christian, the center of Christianity was in Constantinople, not Rome. <laughs> now, Constantine moved the capital of the Roman Empire to Constantinople uh, in the, what's modern Turkey from Rome. Rome was pretty much abandoned. That was the old capital, and it was left to decay. And the Bishop of Rome pretty much could do what he wanted. And that's, you know, and then there was the language difference and everything else. 
So every Lent, Holy Mother Church guides Catholics. Holy Mother Church is headed by, a, according to a, a conservative archbishop, what? The homosexual mafia. That's the one true church, people. If you're Roman Catholic, I mean, it's the bishops. It's the, it's the hierarchy of the church that's the church. The pope and the bishops. Now the pope is stealing all the authority from the bishops, too. He wants to be the only bishop that can do anything. Yeah, he's uh, in his war against uh, Latin. Each day, the propers of the Tridentine Mass. I'm not familiar with all. I know what the Tridentine Mass is. That's the that's the one that, that dates back to the Counter-Reformation and the, the, the Council of Trent. Uh, it doesn't mean a three pointed pitchfork trident it's no it's a, the the liturgy and the catechism and stuff that was established by the counter reformation uh, council of trent they they examined the the claims of the protestants and rejected them they rejected the gospel every day the propers of the tridentine mass encourage us to accept god's grace to accept god's grace to turn away from sin and cultivate a life of virtue. So God, yeah, in Roman Catholicism, you could say that God subsidizes our efforts. He helps us, but doesn't actually accomplish salvation for us. That's, that's up to us. He just gives us a little aid and comfort. Uh, which is not sufficient, because God's requirement is perfection. We have to have perfect righteousness. You have to perfectly keep the law. Jesus did. We didn't. But if you're in him, and he, the wages of sin is death. So there has to be a death paid. Christ paid that. There has to be perfect righteousness. Christ did that. If you're in him, you have what you need because he gives it to us as a free gift. See, that's the gospel. The good news is not that God gives us some assistance. The good news is God saves sinners. Not sinners that make themselves acceptable, but whoever will call upon him to be saved, will be saved, truly call upon him truly believe in Christ and what he did for us and the fact that he rose from the dead, which is the evidence God has given to all humanity that Jesus is the Savior. He is Savior and Lord, and the coming judge, too. In the Epistle for Friday, in the Ember Week of Lent, it reminds us of the Old Testament words of Ezekiel, which applies to all souls. Hmm. What are they going to quote here? Thus says the Lord, The soul that sinneth, the same shall die. This is under the law. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, nor the father bear the iniquity of the son. The justice of the just shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wickedness shall be upon him. This is not a gospel text. Let me point that out. This is under the law. But if the wicked do penance for his, that, that's not what it, that's not what the text says. If the wicked repent, not do penance, repent. Change your mind about it. Change your, your attitude about it. The Greek word is metanoia, which means literally meta is change, noia is mind. Change your mind, change your attitude. Uh, but if the wicked re, uh, do repent, I can't even say do penance. What a corruption. That, that is a problem with the Latin uh, translation of the Greek, by the way, too. Um, Jerome didn't really know Greek or Hebrew. For all his, and Augustine didn't really know it either. 
for all his uh, his sins that he has committed. This is, see, in other words, if you will turn to God, if you recognize your evil and turn to God for all his sins that he hath committed and keep my commandments and do my judgment and justice, living he shall live and shall not die. That is not the gospel. If you, if you turn from your wicked ways and go back and keep the law, not the Ten Commandments, the law, all 613 commandments, every day, all 24 hours a day. There's no hope in the law. There's not supposed to be hope in the law. The law reveals you're a sinner and need a Savior. Through the church, God gives the graces we need to do penance. Say, this is the other thing about the church of Rome, the one true church that's not God's church at all. They make themselves indispensable, just like the Judaizers. So you have to turn to them, not to Christ, to them. Because salvation is only through the sacraments. Lutherans are schizophrenic on that, double-minded. They haven't decided whether they want to follow Christ or follow the church. They haven't decided whether they want they're Roman Catholics or are real biblical Christians. They're they're a confused mix. Because Luther was a confused mix. Then there's others like Church of Christ that are completely dead in trespasses and sins. They are of works too. They're a uh, a turn back, a turning back to a a, a, uh, to a system of works, sacraments. Sacraments are works, things that you, you do or you receive, and you get God's grace through physical, the so-called means of grace. No, faith is the means of grace. Trusting God is the way you receive the grace of God, and that alone. Through the church, God gives the, the graces you know, there's no graces. Christ is the grace of God. We need to do penance for our sins. No, that's Satan. That's Satan that does that. He turns you to your penance, and your works turns you away from Christ in the cross and keeps his commandments so we can save our souls. So saving our souls is through penance, through the church, through penance, doing penance, paying the penalty for our sins, or at least some of the penalty for our sins, and keep his commandments. Oh, yeah. That's why Luther had the Ten Commandments in his small catechism rather than the gospel. Because Luther was a confused man. Whereas these people are just demonic, the people that produce this kind of stuff and this kind of liturgies. I don't know. I'd have to go. I don't know if I, I... I suppose I could dig it up if I wanted to bad enough is to find some early liturgies. Because even things like the Mass didn't come about as far as uh, transubstantiation didn't come around uh, about for, I mean, for after a thousand years. The Catholic Church never changes. That's a bunch of punk. This isn't the Catholic Church anyway. It's the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, the Eastern Church, the Greek Church, says it's the, what do they call it? The Orthodox Catholic Church, as opposed to the unorthodox Roman Church. Uh, so the official name of the Eastern Church is the Orthodox Catholic Church. See, they both claim to be Catholic, which means universal. Uh, <clears throat> but they're not the church at all. Not unless they are in Christ and actually believe his gospel. Trust in him. But if you're trusting in penance and keeping the commandments, you're going to hell. That's what Paul says in Galatians. You've added stuff. You might still believe Christ died for our sins, but if you, if you think the means of, of getting that grace 
is through your penance and your obedience to the commandments, you're going to hell. This is a completely false gospel. Now, this is written by the... Uh, I, I, this doesn't have quote marks, so I think it's written by the, the uh, guy that does this newsletter. Those who realize this, which should include every Catholic who has the use of reason. Well, <clears throat> if, if you realize this, you're lost. Should lead all people to the Catholic Church. See, not to Christ, to the Catholic Church. A Catholic does not want his to bring others to the church, who does not want to bring others to the church, either does not understand the faith or hates his neighbor. This sounds like a quote from somebody else, though. Uh, well, let me put a, it, it, uh, there's a good reason not to bring others to the Catholic Church, lest their children be raped by the priest, or the bishop, or the pope. Especially your boys. I, I think the, the, the evidence for that being a rational fear is super abundant. How come these priests haven't been strung up? No, they've been protected by the institution. And passed around for fre to fresh parishes that don't know what they are. Quote, like so many of Christ, uh, the church's fiercest enemies, Francis and the, his unholy cohort apparently despised the true Catholic faith because of its war on sin. No, Christ won the war on sin. And in him, you have forgiveness through faith in him, and that alone. Now, Lutherans say they believe that. They need to clean their house. Of course, the biggest Lutheran denomination in the United States, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, is utterly and completely apostate. They are as wicked as wicked can be. They have utterly abandoned Christ. They, they, would, they would replace Christ with a rainbow-clad lesbian on the cross. If they haven't already done that, I'm sure some of them have. Because it's that bad. Uh, the denomination I was raised in joined that thing. I, I was privy to watching the, the disintegration of this stuff. Privy, that's not really, that's privileged, hardly. Uh, like so many of the... Historically, the worst enemies of the church have generally been those who despise the church attempts to keep souls, to help souls wage war against sin. No, this is a problem. This is salvation by works, as clear as clear can be. If you try, if you try to wage your own personal war against sin, I'm not going to sin anymore. Then God will accept me. You'll fail. In fact, the very idea of doing that is sinful. So this, this is as clear uh, a revelation of what Rome really is as there can be. Thank you, the remnant. Um, I, I actually listen to the guy that does this once in a while. Uh, this, it wasn't Robert Morrison, though. I don't think he's the one that, that runs the video. You'll find him on YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> under the remnant. But, I mean, I have a certain sympathy for conservative Catholics because at least they believe something, even if it's very wrong. Uh, they have a con a remote connection to to the church. <laughs> but really, though, though it's, a, it's a false gospel. It is, it's like the churches in Galatia uh, oh, you have to be circumcised. Okay, so it's circumcision plus Christ. See, that's the problem. Anytime you add something to Christ for your salvation, some requirement other than just him, you have rejected him. 
because you're saying he's not sufficient. What Christ did on the cross is not sufficient. Of course, it's a real scam when an institution says that, that they swipe the grace of God and say they're the ones that get to dispense it according to your how much you cooperate with them. Talk about a, a, a criminal conspiracy. Talk about a mafia. The fact that they're actually homosexuals is irrelevant compared to the crimes against people that think they're Christians, against children, teaching them this garbage. That's, that's even worse than the sexual assaults on them. Because if you believe what Rome teaches, you will not be saved. So this, it's, an, it's a, against the gospel. Okay, let's go on to another subject. Uh, now that I've, I just happened to run across that this morning. Like, wow, that is about as clear as clear it can be. It's our penance. Our which penance is is making restitution to God for your crimes, and our fasting, which is a form of punishing yourself too. <sighs> the Bible doesn't require us to. To, to make, you know, if, if you think that you will be right with God through penance or through fasting or through tithing or through, or through the church membership or doing good deeds at the local food pantry or something like that, you have separated yourself from Christ. Now, you can do good things, but if you think they're, 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 they make your relationship with God uh, that, that, that that's how you have a better relationship with God. You're you're just deceiving you. Or reading the Bible. Oh, I'm going to read ten chapters of the Bible a day. That's a work. If you think that that will earn favor with God, or giving a big gift of money or something will earn favor with God. You have been seriously deceived. Deceived yourself. Well, let's go over to the fundamentalist camp, the more rational side of them, I guess. Uh, uh, way of life literature. Uh, mm, let's see who is. I, I can't even remember her name. So, uh, I, they have Friday. He has Friday church news that comes out on. Uh, David Cloud, Brother Cloud, David Cloud. He's been doing this for a long, long time before there was an internet. Uh, I believe. Uh, he was uh, at one time a missionary to I don't think it was Tibet, but it was one of the hinterlands back up in that area. Uh, the Himalayan area that uh, it was unlawful to be a missionary to. So uh, he's he has some mixed ideas too, but not too bad. Anyway, this is a story about this came out a little while ago. Uh, Southern Baptist. This this is not a. I think it was definitely over a week ago. Southern Baptist Disfellowship Saddleback. Church. Now I've heard stories that Rick Warren's been disfellowship. No, it's not. His, his, uh, he retired from the church, and the issue was uh, the the new pastor, um, the, the, and his wife were ordained as pastors, or his wife was also uh, was I don't know how they go about ordaining in that particular thing. But uh, and, and some others, I think, but him and his wife as a pastoral team, both teaching pastors. <sighs> okay, uh, Paul forbids that. He, he says, I do not permit. And some people could argue, I suppose, that it really... Well, let me put it this way. It, it's, it's a bit of a violation of... Uh, creation ordinances. Uh, you can't get it. Well, Paul's pretty explicit. However, 
there's really nothing beyond Paul. It's sort of like Paul says men aren't supposed to have long hair. That really there's nothing in the law or anywhere else. It's Paul is is really basically going off creation and saying this is. I, I think what we should do with some of this is say like uh, this is not appropriate. But. Let me, let me be, you know, there's a lot of things that are not appropriate, but they're not the same as being contrary to the gospel. Personally, I, I, I do not, women should not be pastors. But I would rather hear a woman preach the real gospel than most of the men that are preaching, that if you preach anybody, preach a false gospel. And I can think of churches that, might be doctrinally sound that I will not go to because I the pastors go go up there and just speak his opinion or open some human written book, some book other than the Bible and start teaching the church out of some person that didn't think the Bible was sufficient apparently. I mean, I have no respect for a pastor that does that. He he doesn't distinguish between man's word and God's word. He's he's worthless. He's a, he feeds the sheep sawdust instead of grass. He's leading them to into the desert is what he's doing. The desert of man's opinion. And that's not about David Cloud here, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> I'm. David, sometimes I agree with him, and sometimes, no, you're wrong. Uh, okay, so, but this is about the Southern Baptists. Okay, uh, February 22nd, 2023, the uh, California Mega Church Saddleback Church, my short time as a pastor in a Southern Baptist church, yeah, it was a big deal. They, they, people in the church wanted me to do the, uh, the uh, 40 Days of Purpose uh, and I said, no. <laughs> I didn't even really know what it was, but I investigated it later and said, boy, was I right. But I was, Rick Warren, he, no, I, I never have uh, been at all spiritually attracted to that con man. His, he has no gospel. It is it, Talk about easy believism. In his book, The Purpose Driven Life, he's, he, there, he, he basically gives about one paragraph way in the book to salvation. The book is all about you being happy is what it is. And he's as bad as Joel Osteen. Just not as, as stylish. As charismatic. Uh, he's uh, in, either, in any sense. But basically because he was successful, uh, Southern Baptists worship big churches. They worship the success. They're they're typical Americans. Way too typical. We are, they're Americanized. Really. I, they worship the flag, too, generally. I mean, I've seen some really over-the-top. Well, I think the last uh, election we've had, uh, a Southern Baptist church in uh, the area of Dallas that, you know, has demonstrated that continually. He worships Trump rather than Christ. Uh, but he was disfellowshipped. Uh, the church was disfellowshipped. Well, I don't even know if that's a correct term. From the Southern Baptist Convention on Tuesday over having a female pastor. Okay, this is straining gnats and swallowing camels. Rick Warren never preached a biblical gospel. But that wasn't a problem. That wasn't a problem. He was the, the epitome of easy believism. And Rick Warren was not about the gospel. He was not about Christ. He was not about the cross. He was about telling people what they want to hear. And he was very successful at it. That wasn't a problem for the Southern Baptists. But when the church that he was retiring from decided to ordain a husband and wife pastor team, that was too much because it went against their statement of faith. 
Now, the convention statement of faith, which churches aren't required to subscribe to, so they're more concerned about a church having a female teaching pastor, which is an issue, than a church having an utterly false gospel and inviting nude agers to come in and teach yoga and other stuff. I mean, anything flies at Saddleback except Christ. He is a that is a seeker sensitive church, and if you investigate Rick Warren and his methodology in his previous uh, book, The Purpose Driven Church, you'll find out what Rick Warren's about, and it's not about Christ. It's about building. A, it's about getting people in a building, and that's what the Southern Baptists love. Numbers doesn't matter what's being taught there. But, but in the Bible, is having a woman teaching in your church biblical grounds to cut off that church? First of all, the Southern Baptist is not a denomination. It is a parachurch ministry organization, like a missionary fellow uh, organization. It would be like having a denomination, a, a, a group of churches that support Billy Graham, uh, and that gives you the right to say uh, to put on the sign a Billy Graham church or a Billy Graham supporting church. Uh, that, I mean, technically that's all it is. Uh, the, the, uh, the convention has no authority over local churches, although they're trying to steal authority. That's the way of humanity, of sinful humanity, is to, is to uh, aggrandize authority to themselves. And that's what they're trying to do now. But uh, <laughs> anyway, this is a this is a totally upside down thing because, as I said, Rick Warren has an um, does not have the gospel. He's an enemy of the gospel of Christ. Now he doesn't believe that. He thinks that is the gospel. That is the problem. It's the epitome of easy believism. Because I said a prayer, asking Christ to to do something for me, give my life meaning or something. I can't remember it. I could look it up, but it was it was utterly abysmal. It wasn't about sin. Uh, he's one of those pastors that doesn't want to really talk about sin or talk about the cross. It's because those things make people uncomfortable, and he's all about making people comfortable. He's unsaved. Rick Warren, it's, 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 he demonstrates he's an unsaved man. No doubt about it. Because he preaches a false gospel. He's, he doesn't have the grace of God. Any more than, than Francis. Pope Francis has the grace of God. He's not a Christian. He's an anti-Christian. So is Rick Warren. And churches that follow Rick Warren are following, we're following the Antichrist. I don't know how many churches. I know the two largest Nazarenes. That should have given me a clear about the clue about the Nazarenes. But you know, you, you can have an individual church that's different. But when you have a, a center-driven denomination, that's almost impossible. Uh, it's possible that there are some good churches in the Southern Baptists. I've just never ran into one. I never had an experience with one. My experience with Southern Baptists is they are very carnal, very worldly. They love the world and the things of the world. That's, I don't have experience with a whole lot of them. But when I became a pastor in a small country church that happened to be Southern Baptist. They were like that. <sighs> and I and the denominational newspapers, everything else. Yeah, I got an introduction in depth into the Southern Baptists and like, no. This is bad. You know, their local associations and all that stuff. It was there's nothing. Everything I saw was carnal, fleshly, man-driven, program-driven. It wasn't Christ. No, it was, Christ was not, is not the Lord of the Southern Baptists. No, he's not. 
And they're fighting with their Calvinist minority, and Calvinism is, is not any better, really. It's not. Um, I don't know which is worse, easy believism or Calvinism. Well, easy believism's worse because most people's Calvinism is diluted down, and they don't really, almost no Calvinists understand what Calvinism really believes about God. What their confessions really believe about God. By the way, the Southern Baptist Confession of Faith is just required of the employees of the uh, convention, which again is a parachurch ministry organization, just like Billy Graham. So they they have they they send missionaries both domestically and internationally. I wish they wouldn't do that because they don't go with the real gospel. Uh, they have. Uh, universities and seminaries and a printing house and things like that. Lifeway bookstores, uh, which don't have brick and mortar stores anymore, uh, they were, they're one of those things. So there's what they call the Southern Baptist entities. I believe they, can, they are actually separate corporations too. So it's really, it's, it's uh, the Southern Baptist Convention is simply church that supports these ministries and your Southern Baptist Church by giving regular support. And, and your, your faith and practice have, has to be reasonably in line with Southern Baptist. Now, I think it was about 2000 when the current confession came in came out that forbid women pastors. So if you were a Southern Baptist, there was a purge. Southern Baptists have periodic purges. Apostasy followed by a purge, a purging cycle. Uh, like some people's diets, a gluttony following by purging. Um, yeah, but, well, by the way, the, the decision of the, uh, the, 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 the Politburo, uh, the Central Committee, Executive Committee, I believe, is the technical. The Executive Committee is the technical. The Politburo, that's exactly the same thing. Uh, to disfellowship, in other words, to, 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 to say you're not, I'll bet they'll still take money, though, if you send it to them. Uh, they don't turn. They never turn down money. Uh, really, see, they can appeal. See, this can be appealed to the the next meeting of every year, every two years. They have a meeting of the, the churches can send representatives to the convention. It's that's the or gets word convention. Um, this is not the only denominational like thing that has that is a convention. The the Instrumental Churches of Christ, uh, they're a convention too. That they, they are independent churches that engage in common activities, uh, certain common activities, and that's 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 what the federal government used once upon a time was supposed to be too. <sighs> and the, the 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 tendency to 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 centralize power is, you know, we know what happens. Anyway, uh, the this isn't the final world. Actually, Rick Warren at the last convention made an unscheduled appearance and a, an appeal uh, to the convention not to be because they apparently he was aware of some moves to disfellowship uh, Saddleback because not conforming to a particular confession which the local churches don't have to conform to. See, this is this is an attempt by certain elements in the Southern Baptist to aggregate power. And there's other elements that are also trying to aggregate power to them. So it's bad. It's 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 uh, all the flesh. So the, I don't think any good thing can come out of the Southern Baptists ever. They didn't they weren't started for good reasons either. It's like your churches should not you should be independent. Period. Really really independent. And not afraid of being different than others as long as you're uh, following Christ. Stop fearing man. But yeah, uh, he can show up at the next convention and make an appeal. It's his right to the to the convention. I understand. 
and last time when this happened, like I said, he made an unscheduled uh, appeal at the convention because, you know, and basically he was self-promoting. But the convention at that time didn't make any move to to cut off. So, so he could very well succeed at uh, an appeal at the next convention of the Southern Baptists to remain in. If he's clever, because women pastors are not popular among the Southern Baptists, but if he was clever enough to say, well, if he was clever, he would just point out uh, the Southern Baptist documents and their, and, their, uh, and their actual rules that say the, uh, the SBC is not allowed to interfere in local church uh, ministries. Uh, they have no authority over the local church, and just uh, it, and a, appeal on that basis and say you have no authority to do this. And this is not a matter of of essentials of Christian faith. Anyone, anyway. uh, people are not going to hell because they have a female pastor. It's not a salvation issue. His gospel is, but. See that's why I find this so weird is is that they want to this is this is totally consistent with my experience with the Southern Baptists. They want to fight over nits, pick nit and be nitpicking, specks in the eye. It's like Jesus said, you 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 say to your brother here, let me remove this speck from your eye, but they don't realize they have a log in their own eye. Now, the log in the Southern Baptist eyes is false gospel. If you had a real born-again people, they, they would not want to have uh, things in their church that were out of line with the teaching of Scripture anyway. But women teaching, you know, I, I would say you could, you could eliminate the pastors pretty well anyway. You don't need them. You don't need some a professional up there to tell you what to think for 45 minutes. Give you his opinions. That's what YouTube's for. So this this is really uh, this is but the, the idea the Southern Baptists are supposedly the 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 second largest denomination in the United States and the largest quote unquote Protestant. That, but Baptists really aren't Protestants anyway. They're not part of the Protestant Reformation. Not really. If, if, if at all, they were part of the radical element. Uh, uh, what called Baptists in the United States come out of the English Baptist sort of... Uh, really, people that were just trying to follow the Bible. And so, but that's not what Southern Baptists are. It's a culture, you know, it's a southern cultural non, uh, the, the low church of the south, along with the Methodists. The Anglicans were the high church. So th that's where the, uh, the plantation owners went. The, the Baptists, believe it or not, the Baptists in the south, prior to the Civil War, opposed slavery. Nothing like a civil a war to force people into things they to support things they don't want to support. But that that's when your allegiance is not to Christ. See, if, if a person's allegiance is truly to Christ, if, if your allegiance doesn't belong to Christ, how are you a Christian? How can you say Jesus is Lord and pledge allegiance to the United States flag? I mean, it's ridiculous. We have all these terrible inconsistencies in Christianity and in our own lives. If it wasn't for the cross, none of us would have a chance. But it's the gospel. The gospel is the issue. That's what Paul blew his stack over. He didn't condemn and, uh, and uh, uh, send people to hell, uh, anathematize churches 
that were, that were allowing women to teach. He just said, I don't permit that. He didn't even explain why. But he didn't anathematize them, cast them into hell. But when you look at Galatians, when people were corrupting the gospel, he went ballistic, declared war. We got it backwards. We'll declare war over not uh, things that are, are not essential issues. They may be important, but not that important. I mean, are you going to declare war over women that don't that that cut their hair that don't allow their hair to grow down to their backside? I mean, like the holiness once did, because they couldn't understand scriptures. They didn't ask the question, "Why? Why is this here?" And some issues we don't know why. Other than we can see things today where you have women who are in rebellion, just like there's men who are in rebellion, but women in rebellion against their, their creation-ordained place or creation after the fall. Now, I've got to remember that, too. There was some penalties put on human beings after the fall, and Eve had some penalties put on her. Uh, it's about being in a position of submission to her husband, which apparently didn't necessarily exist before that. Didn't have to. So there's this rebellious streak in us, and that's what that's about. It's about the sin nature and rebellion, and uh, also marriage as a as a image of God's relationship with Christ and His people. Uh, Christ and his people is, is a bride and bridegroom. Uh, Christ is the bridegroom. Uh, marriage is to be an image of our proper relationship with God. But people don't even understand these things. And they'll fight about nonsense. They'll fight about like the, 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 the infallibility and inerrancy of, of a particular uh synthetic manuscript, like the Texas Receptus uh, versus the the uh, current version of the product of the textual critics. That's not salvation. Actually, both have adequate revelation from God. That's not The Bible is not the source of salvation. The Scriptures gives us knowledge onto salvation, gives us enough knowledge to be saved, but it is not salvation itself. That is in Christ alone. He is the Word of God. And when we confuse that, when we, when we worship the Bible that talks about Christ rather than Christ himself, we've missed the boat. The Bible is... is God's special revelation. But God's final revelation is Christ. And the Bible points us to Christ. It is not Christ, it points us to Christ. But people are <clears throat> are willing to just like, you know, gag, you know, the spit out a gnat and swallow the camel. That's exactly what the Southern Baptists do when they seek to, to kick out Rick Warren's church for having allowing females to teach, contrary to Scripture. Make that the issue, but they embrace the false gospel, which is the issue. It's absurd. It's wicked. See, Rick Warren's false gospel is his, his say this prayer in your end gospel, which really wasn't even about our sinfulness. And instead, make the, you know, they're, 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 they're not uncomfortable with that. 
Because after all, he built a big church, got lots of people in. To what end? He simply deceived them into thinking they're saved because they said a prayer or are, are seeking, asking God to give purpose to their lives or some stupid thing like that. That's not what the cross is about. Rick Warren's not about the cross. He's not about Christ. He's about pleasing human beings. Like all megachurch pastors. As far as I can tell. At least from what I've seen. They're not truly committed to Christ. Because to be a big to to get a lot of people to follow you, you have to please them rather than God. The prophets, the true prophets, were persecuted and killed. The false prophets were beloved by the people. That's what you have in a sinful world. Sinners, sinners aren't pleased by the truth. They aren't pleased by the cross. That's why the seeker-sensitive movement took the crosses out of the churches, because it made people uncomfortable. So you fill a church with unbelievers, a building with unbelievers. So what? No different than the old way that you mandate people attend church under penalty of law, which was not only the Roman Catholic way, but also the Protestant way. State churches. Look at state churches in Europe. They are as dead as stones. They're lucky if they got half a dozen people in a huge cathedral. And a state-paid minister, usually a female, <sighs> bizarre. That's American Christianity today. We're, we're not talking about the Nazarenes, a little tiny sect, or the Mormons, or Jehovah's Witnesses. We're talking about the largest non Roman Catholic sect in the United States. It's supposed to be Bible believers. It's supposed to be born-again Christians, but they're not. Not the great majority of them. At least from my experience with them. And I don't see any difference anywhere. You look at their you look at their meetings, they run their their conventions as in a, such a crooked evil way, you'd think it's the Democratic Party. Power is what it's all about. And it's flesh with power. Man-made power. That's what they want. When they plant churches, they don't go and look for where there is a place that there is no Bible-preaching church no Christ preaching church. They even knew what that was. No, they'd go and see where there is no Southern Baptist church because if it's not a Southern Baptist church, they need one. No, they don't. Things like that become a plague and a reproach on the name of Christ. Well, that's my opinion. You can have your own. But our allegiance has to be to Christ, not to a human organization, whether it's Rome or the SBC or any other thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and the gospel of Christ. May God bless you with the love of Christ and the true gospel and a love of the truth and the courage to do what's right.